Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be, and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. Hello fourth graders and welcome to the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. This is video number three. This episode is brought to you by Okeocam. If you have seen my How to Pass the Math FSA series, you know that those videos, the problems were really blurry. So this time around for the Math FSA Bootcamp Series, it was super important to me that you all could see the problems and how I break them down. After searching so many dot cams, I found one that I love. I'm actually using the Okeocam S, which was built for students to use. It's super, super easy to use, guys. And students, I've actually created a video that I highly encourage you to go check out on how an Okeo Cam camera of your very own can level up your life as a student. So please take an opportunity to check that out. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and jump into this problem. You should have the worksheet for today with problems one and two on it. If you're like, Miss McCarthy, I don't know which worksheet you're talking about. I don't have it. Well, there should be a link below in the description box or somewhere around this video that will take you to the worksheet that we're using today and actually all the worksheets for the videos that I will upload for this boot camp series. So go ahead, pause the video, try this problem number one and number two on your own. Show all your thinking, show your journey that you took to get to the right answer, and then press play when you're ready to come back and check your work. All right, everybody, welcome back to number one. So I'm seeing a word problem with lots of words. So let me go ahead and read it one time just to understand what's happening in this word problem. So it says, Miss Gaston sells six pairs of jeans and three pairs of shoes at a garage sale. I can picture that in my head. She sold each pair of jeans for $6 and each pair of shoes for the same price. The total amount that Miss Gaston earned was between $45 and $50. Which amount could be the price of each pair of shoes sold? Even as a teacher who's been working with word problems for pretty much her whole life, I am not even going to jump into this problem yet. I'm reading it that first time just to get the gist. And what is the gist of this problem? We have somebody named Miss Gaston who is having a garage sale and she's selling jeans and shoes. Now that we know that, it helps to put us into the right place to go ahead and mark up our text. And before we do that, I want to shout out real quick to Miss Gaston. She is a fabulous teacher, a friend of mine, and I just wanted to know that I was thinking about you, so that's why I put you in this problem. Shout out to you and your students. I hope that you are all doing well. Let's mark up this problem, y'all. Miss Gaston sells six pairs of jeans and three pairs of shoes at a garage sale. I'm actually gonna go ahead and draw that out. So we have somebody named Miss Gaston. She sells six pairs of jeans. Don't judge my drawings, y'all. Not gonna take forever to draw this because 
on the math FSA, for most of us, it can be a timed test. And we want to make sure that we're giving ourselves enough time to figure out the problem, not spend our time making it look good. We have one, two, three, four, five, six pairs of jeans and three pairs of shoes. I'm just going to make shoes like this. So here's a pair of shoes and here's a pair of shoes. Okay. She sold each pair of jeans for $6. So every pair of jeans here, she sold for six dollars and each pair of shoes for the same price not the same price as six dollars but each of these are going to be an equal price so whatever this pair of shoes are it's going to be the same here the total amount that miss gaston earned was between $45 and $50. So it could have been $45, $46, $47, $48, $49, or $50. Which amount could be the price of each pair of shoes? So we're trying to figure out how much these shoes cost. Okay, so let's think about what we know here. And then over here, actually, for your version, you will see a dollar amount there, but I forgot to put that there. I'll make sure I put it in there before I upload the worksheet. So you should see dollar signs in front of there because it says which amount could be the price. So we need prices there. We know that she sold some jeans. We know that she sold three pairs of shoes and that when she did that, she earned between $45 and $50. We don't know how much she earned for the shoes yet. That's our mission. That's what we're trying to figure out but we do know how much she earned from the pants. How much did she earn for each pair of pants? $6 and how many pairs of pants does she have? She has six pairs of jeans, right? So this would be six times six, or you could add them up six plus six plus six plus six plus six plus six because multiplication is repeated addition. So technically we could add all these up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use the multiplication mashup. I'm going to use my six song in the multiplication mashup and get six fingers up until I understand what the product is. Here we go. Hey sixes, I just met ya. You're kind of crazy. Six, 12 and 18, 24 and 30. 36. So six times six equals 36. And that is the amount that she spent on what? Or sorry, that is the amount that she earned for what? For her jeans, right? $36 for the jeans. Now we know when she sold all of her jeans and all of her shoes, we know that she earned a total of between $45 and $50. Let's go ahead and look at our answer choices here. I'm seeing four, six, eight, and 10. If each pair of shoes, let's say that she earned $4, that would be four, eight, 12, $12, right? And if we add $12 plus 36, 36 plus 12, that would get us $48 total. Is 48 between 45 and 50? Yes, it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a question mark there. I'm not gonna mark it correct yet because I wanna go through these two and see if I can eliminate them. Let's say that we threw, that we placed six into the amount that she earned for each of the shoes. That would be six plus six plus six or three times six. So that would be six, 12 and $18 total plus 36 from the jeans would be eight plus six is 14. Woo, it's high up here. Nice landing, dude. And one plus one plus three equals what? $54. Could that work? No, because $54 is more than the total that we know that she earned. So it could not be $6. And because of that, if each pair of shoes were $8, this price would go even higher, right? And if each of these were $10, this price would go even higher, which wouldn't make sense. So therefore, with our mathematical reasoning, we can go ahead and prove those wrong. And let's go ahead and mark A for our correct answer. Now, I forgot to go ahead and put the question type here. This was a multiple choice question, so jot that down in there if you have not already. All right, let's go ahead and slide this up. And let's take a look at number two. Now, real quick, looking upon first glance, let's go ahead and take care of that question type now. This, we have to choose, we have to read some statements and fill in the blanks, basically. This is called an editing task question. Some people refer to it as a hot text as well. All right, let's read it to get the gist. It says there are 46 players on a 
chess team. I'm sorry, I meant to read it to get the gist. There are 46 players on a chess team. They are traveling to a chess competition in eight vans. There are six players in the first seven vans. So we've got a lot of numbers floating around here, but the gist of it is there's some chess players who are going to a chess competition and they're traveling in what? Vans, right? All right, now that we have that, let's go ahead and start marking up our text. There are 46 players on a chess team. They are traveling to a chess competition in eight vans. And there are six players in the first seven vans. That's a lot going on. And I know that I'm gonna have to answer some tough questions down here, but I want it to make sense. So what I'm gonna do is draw it out right now, a quick draw. So 46 players on the chess team and they are traveling in eight vans. So let me go ahead and draw my vans that look a lot like rectangles. So eight vans, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each one of those is a van. There are six players in the first seven vans. So there's van one, van two, van three, van four, van five, van six, van seven, van eight. So all the way from van one to van seven, there are how many players? Six. To do that, and really what we're trying to figure out is probably how many are in this in van number eight, right? So let's see how many players we have total so far. We've got, I'm going to count by fives first and then go back to get the one. So count by fives with me. Five. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. So right here, when we stop and we'll start here and go all the way, we've got 42 players in the first seven vans. But how many players were there in all? Up here, it says that there were 46. So if we know that here we have 42 players, this would be 43, 44, 45, and 46. So now, before we even get started into this problem, we have a lot of information. We've totally wrapped our brains around this problem. Let's take a closer look at what the question's actually asking us to do. Complete the statements below to determine how many players are in the eighth fan. We know because there's fill in the bubble before the choice that is correct. The eighth fan, sorry, V. So the van is going to be labeled as V. This is our variable. It is our unknown. That's what we're trying to figure out, even though we've already figured it out. You can use the equation, which one of these equations, to find how many players are in the eighth van. And then the second statement says there are how many players in the eighth van. Well, we can go ahead and answer that. There are four players in the eighth van. So let's select B there. But we need to figure out what equation we could have used to solve this because we just drew, we drew it out, right? 46, that represents the players. And then we're adding seven times six. So this would be 46 plus, so what's seven times six? Well, let me sing the seven song in the multiplication mashup and get six fingers up. It goes like seven, 14, 20, 128, 35, 42. 42. So 46 plus 42, would that give us how many are in the van? No, 46 plus 42 is not. When we join them together, it will not give us four players. So this one is wrong. Let's try here. We've got 46 minus, and in parentheses, we've got seven times six, which we know is 42. 46 minus 42. Will that give us how many players were in the eighth van? Well, 46 minus 42 is what? Four, right? You could also write it vertically like that to show that it's four. And so, yeah, this one would definitely work out. But let's try the last one, too, just to make sure. We've got 46 and then 7 plus 6. What's 7 plus 6? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 46 times 13. Is that going to give us four players in the eighth van? A uh, no. So what is our correct answer there? Yeah, okay. And really this equation is saying if there are 46 players 
and we take away how many players are in the first seven bands, it will give us how many are in the eighth and final band. Woo! I love my OK OK Cam so much. Teachers, if you do not have a doc cam, you should totally check out the affordable Okio cam. I'll link it in the description box below. It is amazing. I would not be able to make this series if it weren't for the Okio cam, so shout out to them. All right, y'all, that is it for today's episode, but before we go, I do want to send you in the direction of some other videos that can help you with this. So first of all, I'd love for you to check out the McCarthy Math 155 series that breaks down the fourth grade skills that you need to know. So if you're struggling with multiplying or rounding or dividing or finding factors multiples, anything fourth grade, go to McCarthy Math 155, find the unit that you need, and then check out all the videos that you have available for you there. Now it is a membership and teachers, if you become a member, you can share these videos with your students. I show you how to do that in the tutorial tab, but you also get a chance to try it out for seven days for free. That way you know exactly what it is. There are so many schools that have purchased this program for their teachers and their kids are just loving it and begging for more. I'm telling you, it is so fun. How fun is it that students are begging for math? I mean, come on, I love it. That's like, ah! Also, I mentioned those blurry videos in the past, right? Thanks to the Okio cam, now they're nice and clear for you. But in the past, I did create a series called How to Pass the Math FSA for the same kind of problems that we're working on in this video. The only thing that you need to think about with that series is that I created it a few years ago, back when the FSA was a computerized test. It's not a computerized test anymore. It's a paper pencil test. Still a great series, still great practice, still me there helping you, teaching you, let me teach you. I also was using the multiplication mashup, so I included that link below. Check it out. There's a link also for the Okio cam, which I've been using to film this entire series. I absolutely love it. So teachers, check it out. Students, check it out because it is a game changer for you, especially if you are learning from home check it out. I've also created a video there that I'll link below to help you understand all the reasons why you need this Okio cam in your life, students. Okay. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it just a little bit helpful, hopefully a lot of it helpful, do me a favor and pop that like button. That way I know that you are enjoying videos like this and I can create more. You can even go a step further and subscribe to my channel. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And before we go, I just want you to know that you, yes, you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the ones, students and teachers, that we've been waiting for to make this world a better place. So make sure that every day you are finding your light and shining it bright. Watch out, world, because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world awesome. When you have the choice, and you always have the choice, choose kindness. And I will see you on the next episode.